Grounded theory is a way to conduct research in our worlds. When using this method, we start to construct theories after we collect the data for our research. Using grounded theory as a method for conducting research is like using a tool or heuristic rather than an algorithm. Instead of shaping a theory before collecting the data, researchers instead let the theories develop after coding the data. We missed the mark a bit. Instead of letting the data speak for itself, we started theorizing way too soon. In this example that we've provided here, I try to theorize on Emily's textual practices before I even finish coding the data. Taking a step back and focusing in on the actions being done by the interviewees rather than theorizing beforehand can lead to a richer data analysis. For this project, we will be looking at literacy narratives of our classmates. In order for us to do that, we need to find answers to the following research questions. How do graduate students construct academic and disciplinary writing? How do graduate students position themselves in relation to these constructs? For our coding, we decided to go line by line on all of the responses to two of the following interview questions. Could you talk a little bit about the reading and writing practices you brought to the graduate program? With what forms, types, or kinds of texts would you say you most identify? On our first round of coding, we used an open coding method where we focused on actions and processes rather than topics. When I was looking at question one, I looked for words that illustrated the interviewee in action. For example, in Cynthia's response, I commented on phrases and words like read, annotated and skimming, write, and I even highlighted her feelings towards certain topics. Once they were commented on, I made comments like teaching leads to new literature interests, using tools for academic reading, and teaching to academic practice. When we conducted focus coding, we started looking for codes in the data that appeared more frequently, including patterns that we found from the interviewees' literacy responses. If you look at these two examples from the second question that we coded on the screen, you can see that John and Emily both identify first with personal text. John mentions poetry first, then Emily expresses her interest in narrative forms. They both then make a move to express what role academic texts play in their identification of text. For John, Poetry helps him learn how to revise his academic text, and for Emily, she expresses her equal interest in how formulaic texts make the best academic text. In the other sections, one major pattern was in how each interviewee recognized how teaching improved their reading and or writing and in turn brought said tool with them to the graduate program. Now that we've recognized some patterns in our data, we can now begin to theorize from the data. One of the first theories that we can think of with this data is that potentially the graduate students in our mini research project identify first with personal text, although they also identify with academic text, considering that they do spend a lot of time studying and developing them, they use their personal text to help them learn and create their academic knowledge and writing style. The second theory we can take from this data is that the graduate students bring not only actual reading and writing practices, but also bring valuable tools through the practice of reading and writing in a classroom or other teaching environment. 
Even though our first attempt at grounded theory was a swing and a miss, and although it can be intimidating and time-consuming, we found that it provides us with rich data that can lead to new theories.